I've just um, I've just had a number of um, experiences across different industries. And what this experience has done for me over time is has given me the opportunity to um, experience people management, to experience people management from different contexts, from an internal perspective and from an external perspective, you know, from finding the right kind of talents for organizations and, you know, from also managing these talents in-house. And that it will shape, you know, some of my conversations that I'll be sharing with us um, today. On the human side of it, I'm not, you know, so focused on the professional side of it. Um, I love teaching. I think it's something that, you know, I, I, that gives me a lot of fulfillment. So that's why you can see me doing this today. Um, definitely. Um, what else do I love doing in my spare time? Maybe I love playing chess. Um, you know, I play chess by myself and with computer. You know, the trash me a lot of times. But, you know, you just keep learning through that experience too. I love video games. Oh, my God, I love video games. Um, you know, if I just have some spare time, I'm in transit. If I'm not reading anyways, I'm probably playing video games or something on my phone or keeping me updated. And I'm pretty active on social media as well. Um, but you know, just to get to the business of today, I'll um, I'll put up a slide shortly. And you know, you all said I should not spend beyond 30 minutes. So I'll try my best to stay within that um, timeline. But some of the things thoughts I'd share today, I'd share it more from um, an organizational perspective. And I would also lean greatly to the side where, um, you know, ourselves as um, people working with organizations, as potential entrepreneurs, as potential, you know, professionals, basically, you know, even if we are friendship professionals, that we can um, make good use of this information. That's basically um, what um, I'm just sharing um, there. I'll, I'll bring up my slide shortly. Um, there, but the conversation of today is around developing entrepreneurial employees. Gratefully, you know, it has been made easier. Um, and um, the word has now changed to intrapreneurs, you know, because over time, a lot of um, people have seen entrepreneurship from the perspective of, oh, who's an entrepreneur, basically? Um, you know, we, we think of, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, we think of, you know, the Jeff Bezos. We think of, um, you know, um, what's this guy's name? This um, billionaire, Bill Gates. His name actually sounds like billion, Bill Gates, Bill, you know, billion. Um, they're about. So, you know, that, that's what comes to our mind when it comes to entrepreneurship. A lot of us do not see it from the perspective of us ourselves being entrepreneurs. And that is how, um, you know, this, this is what I'll, I'll share in our conversation today. Um, let me bring up my slide very fast. Um, Yala, please just confirm when you can see my slide. Okay, yes, I can see you. Okay, great. Okay, great. So, um, you know, and where, where I'm going to with this conversation is that developing entrepreneurial employees is for us to understand that entrepreneurship does not only have, have to do with, you know, running a business, you know, managing a business, having a new idea that you are running or turning into a business, basically. We can also be entrepreneurs in our respective careers. We can be entrepreneurs in our respective professions. Again, the idea behind entrepreneurship as defined by, you know, different school of thought is you are developing new products, new services, new ways of doing things basically for value creation. That is what entrepreneurship is all about. So in your respective profession, you know, if you are doing things differently and you are very sure of that, you are bringing in new ways of doing things. You are doing it, you know, for better experience for, you know, for users basically, even within your organization. And it is adding value. You know, it's not just, you're just trying ideas and testing things, you know, you should, agree with yourself that you're an entrepreneur. And this is something that has evolved, has shaped our organizations, um, you know, have survived and thrived over, over, over the years. Just this quote by, you know, Gifford Pinchot, he says that entrepreneurs are the dreamers who do. So it is not, entrepreneurship is not just about having ideas, it's also doing. There's also the doing part. So it's about dreaming and doing, um, basically. So the context which you see it from is, if I'm having ideas, I'm bringing it to life. That is very, very important when it comes to you know, being an entrepreneurial employee. So let's just um, you know, pay attention to this as we are going, dreaming and doing, you know, pay attention to that very fast. He also said that the ones that take on responsibility in creating innovation of any kind within a business. So within your organization, what is innovation basically? New ways of doing things, you know, new product as I've already said um, earlier. So if you look at your current you know, responsibilities at work, if you look at your current, you know, job description? Are you doing beyond the job description? Are you bringing in new ways of doing things? You know, those are questions you should be asking yourself. 
and even for business owners, you know, for entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, are we are we creating an environment you know, where people can? It is not just um, you know, what people can do is not just fitted to their job description. You know, that's how we can drive innovation. And I'll share with us very fast why it is important for us to be entrepreneurs and also um, enable our people, you know, to become entrepreneurial employees. And that's, we've seen this quote over and over, innovate or die, you know, it is, it is something that is very, very common, innovate or die, innovate or die. And it can tell us, you know, it, we, we can pick up different stories over time based on what history can tell us. Here is this quote on my left, I think it's on my left. It says that it doesn't matter if you're a lion or a gazelle, when the sun comes up, you better be ready. It is from an African program that says um, when a gazelle, you know, a gazelle wakes up in Africa, for it to survive, to see the next day, it must be able to outrun the lion that is chasing it. For it to survive each day, each time you know, it gets haunted, it must be able to outrun the lion chasing it. And for the lion as well to survive and be able to feed itself, it must be able, it must, you know, develop itself to be fast enough to catch up with the gazelle that is also trying to, you know, escape, you know, it from being its prey, basically. So we need to understand that as employees, as business owners, our competitors are innovating. And as they are innovating, they are going to be putting us at the back burner. They're not going to be at the forefront of it again. I am very sure we need a number of, you know, a number of organizations that they were at the forefront of everything at some point and today they no longer exist or they no longer have any market share basically they're no longer profitable an example we can relate with very very easily is nokia growing up i, I think my first phone was on a motorola you know it had a horn like this and it had a dog that used to run the next set of phones i used you know were nokia you know the touch like nokia amongst many other nokia and we, we we just thought nokia was just going to be everything you know into the future of mobile phones but where is where is nokia today i can assure you that Nokia's market share, if it exists at all, is inconsequential compared to the, the market leaders when it comes to mobile phones. And it is because they did not innovate over time. Competitors caught up with them. So as professionals, you know, looking at ourselves, are we also developing that entrepreneurial mindset? Because really, entrepreneurship is the mindset. It is not just about the ideas that you have. It's the mindset behind the ideas. It is the mindset behind what you do and you know, what you invest yourself in as well. So even that's from an organizational context, look at yourself as an employee, as a professional. Are you developing that kind of mindset that you know you're looking at what trust me, the competitive market out there. I know we are in the whole conversation of the great resignation, talent are leaving organization, among many other things. But the thing is the people organizations we keep chasing are those that have an example of the entrepreneurial mindset, the dreamers and the doers. So don't just focus on, oh, you know, this is what the job description says, this is what I'm going to do. You are consistently evolving as changes are coming. And we, we, we know of, um, there, have, there have been four revolutions basically you know, in the history of, um, in the last hundred um, years in the world. We've had the first, second, third and fourth industrial revol um, revolutions basically. We had the mechanical revolution, which was the agricultural um, dispensation where um, from, Manual farming, you know, using cutlass and all as you have it. We went into using tractors. We went into, you know, railroads. We had trains, amongst many other things. That was like the first revolution, basically. And businesses, people that would not follow that evolution, you know, they died out in the markets. Businesses and people that would not, they died out. The second revolution that we have is the electrical revolution, where we had, you know, mass production coming into place, you know, um, manufacturing companies, mass production, factories coming up basically, you know, bigger machines, enabling mass production of products, enabling mass production of services. Basically, that's the second revolution. Businesses and people that would also not follow that revolution, they did what? They died. So it is an, it is a, it is a, an innovate or die world, basically. The third revolution is technological revolution. People are developing technological skills. We've had internet, mobile phones, you know, computers, name it. That's the third industrial um, third revolution, basically. And the fourth revolution, which we are currently experiencing now, you know, focuses on internet of things, focuses on robotics. So as, as employees, are you looking at developing skills that align with each revolution that is coming? Or are you still stuck in the previous dispensation that is, you know, already losing relevance? Being able to use internet, 
being able to use a computer, being able to use a mobile phone, maybe some, some decades ago could be considered as an essential skill in, in the business world. But right now, a baby can, you know, you can handle your mobile phone to a four-year-old and they will handle, they would operate, they, they can, some can even hack your Wi-Fi, you know, very easily. You can access your Wi-Fi, connect to your Wi-Fi, play games on your mobile phone, unlock it just by noticing the patterns that, you know, you use while using this mobile phone. So, you know, the basic things from the previous dispensation is, doing, is losing relevance gradually. And we are moving into a new revolution. So are you adapting fast or are you staying stagnant, basically? Because that will just lead to you know, a career suicide um, somewhat. So this quote here says that to be successful in the future, you know, the rate of internal innovation must exceed the rate of you know, external innovation. For businesses, you can't wait for what the market is saying. You can't wait for what the market is doing. You have to keep evolving. And how can organizations evolve? It is the people. We can tell, you know, from different organizations, just, just some context. If we set up two organizations and, you know, give them, say, $50 billion um, each, set up the same structure, give them the same processes, what will differentiate them over time are the quality of people in these organizations. You get? And the quality of people in the organizations, as it is influencing the success, also the ideas they bring to work, how they do the work will influence it. So why are organizations not, um, you know, not, prioritizing, enabling their people to be more innovative, you know, to be able to stay ahead of the market, basically. So to be successful in the future, we have to adapt, you know, to innovation as fast as we can. Um, a survey from, from InnoSight says that, you know, 88% of Fortune 500 companies in 1995 no longer existed in 2015. You know what that means? For every 10 businesses that existed in 1955, nine of them no longer exist as of 2015. So if we are looking at our career today, 10 years down the line, how relevant will your skills still be? How relevant will your products still be in the market? Basically, that is what that question is. So the case for um, driving entrepreneurship is very, very strong for organization and even for us as professionals because no one knows the business more than the employee. You can bring in consultants to you know, develop frameworks for you. But the thing is your employees still understand the process, still understand the product much more than any consultant can. So it is very important to focus on your employees, enable them, create an enabling environment for them amongst many other things, which I'll still share as we go on um, through this um, conversation. So it is no longer just about for your financial performance at the moment. It's no longer people being, about people being happy. It is also about your organization surviving. That is why we need to prioritize entrepreneurship. And I'll share some, some very interesting stories as we go on. This is the story of, um, I'm sure nobody knows this guy, very high chance you don't, but if I, if I presented a picture of Steve Jobs, very high chance you know Jobs is. And the reason is because Steve Jobs, to an extent, brought you know, the iPhone to our faces. And the iPhone can do a whole lot of things. You know, it, can, it has brought the world into our times as we have it today. We can take, um, According to data from some, some years back, um, basically, 600 and as of 2018, we were taking human beings, we were taking 657 billion pictures, iPhone users alone, 657 billion pictures um, per year, and 1.8 billion pictures were taken at, at an average per day in 2018. That tells you how much you know, the phone can do. But the reason I'm sharing this data around pictures is we also know that there are some other companies that have been around, you know, photography, taking pictures as well. We have Nikon, Canon, Sony, amongst many others. Those are probably the brands that are, we are familiar with when it comes to digital photography. But if you check it very well, the first company that pioneered to an extent, that patented rather, digital photography was Kodak in 1975. And it's what the idea was suggested by you know this guy Steve Sansen. Sassen. Um, he was 25 years old. He was a, more like a junior employee. He was a junior engineer in the business then. And when he proposed this prototype that you can see in this picture, they thought it was a bad idea. Kodak had 90% market share as of 1975. Well, Kodak is bankrupt today. They were bankrupt about 2012. That's like 10 years ago. So if they had 90% um, of market share in 1975, what went wrong? They did not see an idea that an employee was bringing forward because they had the largest market share and they believed that was how it was going to be. So what happened to them? They died because they did not innovate. And simply an employee idea that was suggested in 1975 
did not come to light. That was one of the reasons the business died. So imagine they had brought digital photography, you know, to light then. They could have probably seen, you know, they could have, they might even be the ones who hold iPhones today. We never know, amongst many other things. Um, yeah. So the point I'm making is intrapreneurship, you know, is very, very important in organizations, enabling employees to share their ideas. So second thing I'd want to share is, um, you know, the anatomy of entrepreneurial ideas. A lot of people think when it comes to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial ideas, it should always be um, new product, new product, new product. Yeah, very, you know, get, get about four categories when it comes to entrepreneurial ideas. You know, it could be around a product or a service that your business is offering, it could be a new product. It could also be changing the customer experience. It could be improving your process. And it could also be about the employee experience as a professional in your organization. So these are four categories you can focus on. You are looking at, okay, what, what new ways can I innovate? Focus on these four areas. And I can assure you, you can change um, something. So it is looking at how you can innovate what your company does, product or service, how you can innovate for who your company serves, who are your customers, how you can innovate or improve how the company operates, and how to improve or innovate for the people doing it. And now some example, I'm sure we can relate very fast to Coca-Cola when they had this share, share, um, share a Coke campaign, 2013, 2014. What happened to that campaign was Coca-Cola's um, market share like skyrocketed. It was crazy. I'm sure we all, we all remember that experience. You know, you're looking for a, Coke, a bottle of Coke in ShopRite or whatever store you can find around you. It's your name on it. I remember I kept you know, a bottle of Coke with my name for, for some months or just on my shelf there. And that, that idea, that share Coke campaign was an employee's idea. So you can see it was just an idea you know, that evolved into a campaign and into something that you know improved the business's market share. So don't just don't just look at ideas as products only. It must be something that is you know concrete. It could just be something that improves the customer experience. Another example I can align with that is Starbucks. If, um, for a lot of people, Starbucks. Whenever I buy um, coffee from Starbucks, they write you know your your order on the cup. Was an employee one day because he wanted to remember he was serving a number of friends and he was trying to label it properly. So he wrote their names on the cups and you know those people loved it and they gave the feedback and that's how Starbucks evolved. This was a frontline employee, like you know a barista, the frontline. And as this employee did that, I mean, it just skyrocketed and became a campaign at Starbucks. Then I mean it improved. You know a lot of people wanted to have coffee at Starbucks because oh they could get their names on the cup. It was a, a big campaign then. So ideas, you know, sometimes can change the trajectory of businesses. So this PlayStation, for example, as well, you know, the PlayStation, I know a lot of people went crazy in 2020, 2021 about PlayStation 5. But PlayStation 5 was an idea that brooded for about five years before it was approved. An employee there, a junior employee, Ken, who was working with Sony. And what happened was at home, you know, the, the, the prominent game then was Nintendo. And as he was trying to um, set up, it was, a, it was a tech person. As he was trying to load the game for his daughter. He realized that it was taking time and he wanted something that was faster. He suggested to his business that why can't we have that? He was working with Sony, but Nintendo was you know, just another organization in gaming. So they were not doing gaming. He proposed the idea at, you know, in the workplace, you know, but they were like, nah, this was like 1988, basically. They didn't know nobody, they were like, nah, that's that. We don't want to do gaming. Nobody's, in, nobody's playing games these days. Some three, four years down the line, you know, it was persistent and you know, it pushed the idea. And PlayStation came to life in 1994, as you know, from what I read, from what my, my research it came to life in 1994. And PlayStation has sold over 500 million, you know, units since inception. That is crazy load of money, trust me. Just an employee's idea. Um, you know, going to Amazon's Prime. Amazon's Prime, Amazon Prime is responsible for 19 billion. Um, dollars of Amazon's um, revenue every year. It was an employee's idea. They just wanted to create an exclusive membership where they could get their delivery in two days. And, you know, about 27% of Amazon's customers use Amazon Prime. It was an employee's idea. McDonald's happiest meal was an employee as well. Um, you know, at McDonald's, he wanted to pack a meal for his kid and realized that he was always struggling to piece it all together to know what the kid would need. That's the idea behind um, Amazon's Happy Meal. And they sell over 3 million Happy Meals every day, every blessed day. You know, it was an employee's idea that brought that up, you know, being able to pack a meal into a box. Name it as well, um, Apple's slide to unlock that we always see, you know, on our phone today. There's a very high chance that at some point, maybe when you were using your phone before, locking keypads, you know, was a thing. 
You could have put your phone in your pocket and you, mis you mistakenly dialed someone and you know, they ran out of their time. That's the right person to dial. For an employee at iPhone as well, you know, he was always having that issue. You know, his phone was always dialing whenever I kept it in his pocket or something. And one day he was on a airplane. He was on a airplane and he was trying to use the restroom in the airplane, the toilet. And you know, toilets have these funny slides to unlock things. Toilets usually have this slide to unlock on airplanes, if you've seen one. And that was the eureka moment for him. He was an employee, he was just a tech guy, and he was just like, you know, this looks like a good idea for our phone lock screen. Slide to unlock. That is our one of the features you know, that, that defines our user experience as customers today came into place. Employee ideas. But we need to understand that every amazing I, um, um, product, service, experience you see out there from organizations, it is not always the CEO that holds those ideas. It is employees. So it is important for us to be able to you know, tap into the resources that we have, you know, the people that we have, and create a distinct advantage for our businesses and even ourselves as employees, applying ourselves, knowing that everything begins with what with an idea. The signs of employee, um, signs of um, entrepreneurs. Abiola, just to confirm, I have about ten minutes left, right? Yes, of course. You can, yes, yes, yes. You're, Great, you're thank you. Go When it comes to the science of um, the entrepreneur, so as we are seeing ourselves as um, professionals in the workplace, it is also important for us to. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of research papers, there are a lot of journals, there are a lot of articles that have talked about the traits of entrepreneurs, you know, entrepreneurs that are risk taking, you know, and all those things. While these things start from a mindset, it is also important for organizations to be able to identify um, those that have this kind of mindset. And it is often evident in three ways their ability, social skills, and drive. It is always evident in those three ways. And there are always ways to also measure this. There are scientific ways to measure these things. That's what I'm saying. The first thing when it comes to ability is system thinking. How does this person see you know, the business connecting? How does this person see um, you know, different business functions? The value chain, the business value chain. Does this person understand the business value chain? That's where the business acumen comes into place. For you to even produce um, propose a new product in your organization, a new service, a new experience as you may have it, you need to, first of all, understand what you are working around. Very important. The second thing is cognitive ability. Definitely, you know, dexterity comes into place here. Your knowledge, your skills, your you know, other, other things that, you know, make you a person. Your intelligence, basically, amongst other things. Your ability, because you cannot give what you don't have. That is, I think that's a common quote um, that we have around. So that's your cognitive ability all comes into play. And then your vision and imagination. How creative do you think? Can you think, can, do this, do this, does this person think differently? Can they see an idea, you know, even when others do not see it? Can they see a problem? You know, there are people that see problem and they see problems in problems, you get. We call it reverse, reverse um, problem solving. And when you see a problem in a problem, there's another opportunity in the problem that you see in the problem. There are people that see solutions for problems. So you get, how does this person imagination, how does it work? You know, what is what how does this person see the future? Can this person just imagine what is happening in the future and how our business you know can adapt to it? And you can see basically you know, some day-to-day -day elements of people's you know work, basically. The second thing I would mention here is social skills. I would say it any day, political skills are very, very important in the workplace, and that's something you should also identify um, you know, amongst employees. Being able to identify interest across organizations, identify you know your, your who, are, who are your key stakeholders. In the business, if I have an idea today, who can I sell it to that can you know influence my idea, you know, to become a reality, basically? Who are the people I need to um who are the decision makers as well? That you know, if I have to pitch my idea to them and they can decide on it, how can I identify their interest and align my ideas to it? Social skills. The second thing there is collaboration. Um, collaboration is always very important because you can't do it alone, basically. So how you work with people will also be influenced by you know, being able to be entrepreneurial. And the second thing is emotional intelligence, being able to manage yourself physically and manage others. That's something that is also very, very important to being entrepreneurial. Um, so be looking out for these things in yourself. You know, do, I, do I exhibit emotional intelligence? Um, how collaborative am I? Am I? Um, what are like my political skills when it comes to the workplace? How do I think about the business? Do I have a sharpened business acumen? And the third thing I'll just run to is um, your drive. That's just it. Dreamers and doers, remember, what makes people doers 
it is not just their skill. It is the drive they have that makes them do us. You get your ambition, your work ethics, your willingness to do. You know, we have people in the workplace, when they say people that go the extra mile, that is what it means. You get people that go the extra mile. That's what it means, basically. So your drive is very, very important with regards to being an entrepreneurial person. Um, there are two tools that um, I've, I've, I've worked with before now. There's the first one. If you want to take it, you can, you can also take this. The first one, for example, the Builder Profile 10 by um, Gallup. It costs about 20 pounds. Uh, there about uh, 20 pounds. Yeah, I've, I've taken it before now. Now, what that tool does, I'll just run us through what the report from Gallup um, 10 looks like. Then the second one, what the Builder Gallup Profile basically does is that it identifies certain traits that entrepreneurial um, people have. It ranks the top four for you and you know, tells you the remaining six. And it also identifies you. There are three types of entrepreneurial employee. We have the rainmaker, we have the expert, and we have the conductor. So you can fit into one of these three. So it can also help you better be self-aware whenever you are taking up projects, whenever you are you know, bringing up ideas in the workplace, and now you are working with people. For organizations as well, it also helps you identify different types of people in your business and how you can um, deploy you know, them to their work, to projects, to ideas, and all of that. This is what the Gallup report looks like. So on my left, I have um, you know, the talent order, which is determination, independence, confidence, and delegator. So this is, if you check some of these traits, if the top four traits for this person would influence the type of entrepreneurial talent that they are, basically. So you can, we can see the other six on the, on the right here, risk, profitability, relationship, disruptor, knowledge, and selling. I'll be glad to share this slide um, with, um, Viola, so you can forward it to participants, uh, basically. And it, it does not just show you the talents that you, you, I, you know, exhibit, that you exhibit, that you own. It also shows the level with which um, you, know, you have it, how you can express them, and what you can do to improve them, basically. So it's, it's a very, very detailed, report, more detailed than this, definitely. The second part of it, which I mentioned, is one that you know, shows your role as an entrepreneurial talent. Are you a rainmaker? Are you a conductor? Are you an expert? Rainmaker people that are good at sales. They can sell ice to an Eskimo. You get, you know, there are some entrepreneurs that you, when you meet them, they, if, they, if they pitch their idea to you, you will buy it. But they are not great at managing the business, at, you know, coordinating the project. So that is how different people are in organization. They are also the conductors. These are the people that are in core management. They are, you know, managing all the resources from different spheres, basically. And we have the experts. These guys are just very, very good at what they do. And you always need them in the other, your tech guys, for example, um, in the business. And I would recommend you know reading this book, Entrepreneurs, as well, just you know for further knowledge around, um, you know, developing your entrepreneurial um, skills. Running very fast to the last um, five minutes. So how can organizations develop entrepreneurs? Um, basic, which is at the core of everything I've mentioned today. First of all, focus on engagement. There was a research by um, Deloitte that says that. Um, Four out of five employees, you know, there was a research across about 1,800 organizations, and it shows that four out of five employees have an idea that could make their business process better, their own job better, you know, a product better. So if 80% of organizations, if 80% um, of employees have ideas across this organization um, on how processes can be better, product can be better. So why are organizations not tapping into it? That is where focus on engagement comes into place. Engaging your people, creating an avenue you know, creating a platform for people. Don't just have suggestion box, you know, at your reception in your office for complaints only. You know, receive suggestion, create intentional engagement, you know, campaigns, hackathons, let people bring up ideas, you know, whatever they think, you know, create just, just that platform for people to be able to express. And um, basically, I know Google has something like that. Um, you know, they have innovation hubs. Definitely. A lot of organizations have innovation hubs these days um, as well, but we should not only focus on tech. We should also look around our product, our processes, our customer experience, amongst many other things, but create an, um, an opportunity for engagement. Second thing is to nurture the culture, you know, to have people express their ideas freely. It is very important for us to create an environment where people can fail. You know, we are not expecting perfection. Perfection is always um, the enemy of, um, you know, progress, definitely. If you are trying to find perfection in one thing, very high chance you won't make progress easily at it. So not quite a culture where it is okay for people to fail and not you know, face extreme consequences. You know, create an environment that people can incubate ideas, create a culture where people can feel free to test ideas, uh, basically. The third one is to encourage collaboration. 
you know, you, you can't do things in silos, you know, create environments where people can work across functions. People can see the bigger picture of it being beyond them, um, basically, you know, encourage collaboration. Transparency and feedback is also very important. When you have um, ideas, don't let people that also bring this idea forward, don't push them back, don't say because they are junior employees, um, basically. There is this product, um, Cheetos, I don't know if you know Cheetos, it's a snack. There is, there's this variant of um, Cheetos that is like one of the highest um, gross, it was is one of the highest grossing products from Cheetos. That's um, free, free only, something like that, that's the name. It was, the idea was suggested by a janitor, you get. And it is a product that is one of the highest grossing products today. It was suggested by a janitor. So, you know, uh, ensure transparency in your um, processes when it comes to ideas management, you know, give feedback. If the idea is not one that is matured enough, you know, give feedback on how they can improve it as well. You know, create systems around all of these things. Also, the management approach for people in your organizations when it comes to entrepreneurial ideas should be different. It is not just, you know, the normal job description, performance evaluation thing. It's very important to switch management approach to not just focus on job output, but also focus on improvement to a very um, you know, large extent. The last thing I would want to mention there is to recognize on and celebrate success. You know, reward people for, don't, don't take off projects of people, um, basically. Don't take projects of people. Reward, recognize their ideas. Don't take off ideas from them and celebrate successes. Although when the idea you know, goes to market, celebrate them. It is very important for us to create an environment that is enabling. That's like the first thing, very important. And great ideas and products result from letting employees, you know, allowing them create an environment where they can think, experiment, and play with ideas. Lastly, becoming entrepreneurs, and this is where I'll close it um, for today. Number one, focus on value creation. There are different types of value. We have economic value, you know, we have enjoyment value, we have social value. The most important thing is don't be focused on, you know, oh, we're having a hackathon. To what end? What are you trying to you know, do at the end of this? To what end is your hackathon? Um, basically, don't just focus on activities. Don't avoid innovation theaters. That's what we call it. Is when you spend an um, uh, you know, excessive amount of time, you know, doing brainstorming. Okay, what are you brainstorming for? To what end? What value? You know, be very, very clear around the questions that you are as, as answering. Um, you know, from whatever exercise you are focused on. So, how is this um, brainstorming session, hackathon, challenge? How is it adding value to my customer? How is it adding value to our employees? How is it adding value to our organization? How is it preparing us for the future? Basically, value creation is at the core of being an entrepreneur. That is like the first thing you should always focus on. You know, your activities, how is this thing adding value? In my head, I always say, what is the ROI? Um, definitely. The second thing is to focus on relationship. It is very easy for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's this egoistical thing where, oh, it's my idea. And you hoard it, you keep it. You know, you don't want other people to steal your idea in quotes. Focus more relationships rather than you know holding your idea. You know, focus poster collaborative relationship because when it comes to building these ideas, you know, scaling them as well, it's not something you can do alone in your cubicle. And organizations to create environments where people can you know foster such relationships as well. And the thought is you know to also focus on sustainability. Don't just have ideas. Have ideas that um can can scale and have an output that you can have a result. And basically, don't just have an idea that is halfway. Have ideas that you can replicate it, you know, reproduce it, either as a product, a service, an experience, or whatever. Focus on sustainability. Don't just let it be a one-off and a, it is done. There is very high chance it will not add as much value as you would have wanted it to if it is not sustainable. So, you know, my final thought is that the lack of innovation is not due to um, employees not having the intelligence, not being passionate enough from you know wide you know wide um my, this is my perspective as well and you know from also my understanding of various you know research and journals that have been um written around entrepreneurship what we've what, what, what i've found is that it's not that employees do not have intelligence or they're not passionate enough they do not have the creativity it is because a lot of them do not have the opportunity to express so it is very important for organizations to create um you know the opportunity for people to experiment to think experiment and Play. There's a bright future for entrepreneurs and businesses who listen to their people. So thank you very much. And I hope this session has really been um, helpful. So thanks, Aminian. Oh, Mr. Samuel, Samuel, thank you so, so much. This 
Hmm. It's been wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much for Jim. coming up, uh, on the Edge Live this month. Um, while you were presenting, when you go to, I think the the, the second to the last slide that talks about um, the brainstorming thing and all that, how to you know, reduce the time you spend trying to craft the old ideas and you know just move along. Well, I picked I picked something from that. So we we have Samuel now. We have him on lockdown for let's say the next 15 20 minutes so please your questions on the subject matter today developing entrepreneurial employees or questions you have been wanting to ask Samuel. so let's let's start asking our questions if you cannot use the chat box i could permit that you raise your hand then i'll mute and then you ask the question but if you can use the chat box please go ahead and put your questions in the chat box and let's start answering Thank you very much, Samuel. And if there are points that um, you find interesting and you just want to highlight them, what you enjoyed from what Samuel said, you can also show some appreciation by putting that in the chat box. First of all, I even said we should, we should, we should give Samuel a round of applause. So let's just show uh -huh. um, emojis Thank there in the, in the box. I'm sorry, I didn't do that immediately. Let's show emojis in the box and uh, you know, clap our hands for, for some food. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really learned today. Let's all do that, please. Energy, energy, energy in the box, in the box. Yeah. Well done, Mr. Samo. So questions. Let's start asking our questions right away. Thank you, people. Thanks for the energy. Great, great, great. OK. So respecting questions now. Question time. I'm going through the chat to see if I have questions. Yeah, that's fine. I'm with you. OK. So before um, anyone drops, I have this question for you, Samuel. Sure, so, sure. So a workforce where, um, you know, like a startup, small, they're just branching out. And, uh, um, you know, big corporations, they have this L&D, and yeah. development. Um, so what about for small for startups? How can they bring this into their, their business? So do they have to create one in house? Do they have to have sources? How do they go about the L and D? So I think I think startups even have um, the biggest advantage because um, they still have a very, very fluid system. Um, the gap between average for most startups, the gap between the most junior employee and the most senior employee is not that wide. Again, I've worked in organizations that the gap between the most junior employees and the most senior person is about 10 levels, you know, between. So, um, you know, such is not, does not happen, um, you know, with startups. So it's, they have that advantage, first of all, to innovate faster because there, there's, there's lesser bureaucracy. So it is now creating an environment where people, it is more around the, about the environment, um, basically, creating that culture where people can, bring up ideas without looking foolish even if the idea does not make plenty of sense right now okay it is creating that um, environment where people can suggest things people can share their opinions around their product services and all of that that's the first thing creating that opportunity I and mean, you're creating that engagement that's the first thing the second thing is you know startups have often have um, you know resources with regards to they can have orbs that you know you can incubate if you have an idea you can form a project team and incubate it basically you know try to bring it to life so i think this, these are like three key things that startup can do create the environment first of all create engagement a platform for them to be able to um people for them to be able to freely share ideas and the last one is to create intentionally create systems ops that people can you know participate in you know, to work on this idea. So it is not, it's going beyond the dreaming, you know, the conception, but also going to, you know, the execution as well, doing. So it is dreaming and doing, um, basically. Thank you very much for answering, for answering that. Questions, do we have questions for someone? It's like, it's like I didn't just Okay, <laughs> one question here. How do we ensure, this is from Adebayo Ayani. How do we ensure employees stay engaged 
that's one then another one is how do we know they are disengaged so how do you know when somebody is you know cooling off so when it comes to um employees in the in, in the workplace and staying engaged one thing i can assure you of is that entrepreneurship is also very very important to employee retention it is also very very important to employee retention and the reason is because we have younger people i think right now millennials are the, the largest population of people in the workplace millennials the largest population and with this generation comes you know new demands new attitudes as we have it as we've had over time um all and all with this new demand this new attitude in the workplace we've seen that a lot of them switch jobs often amongst all those things that we see regularly and if you check it very well a lot of people are no longer changing jobs because of how much they earn they are now changing jobs because for, of a lack of expression a lack of passion for what they do you get and that is one of the key things that entrepreneurship can do you know in organizations creating an environment where it could be a passion project for people you get it could be something that your business works around and you're just passionate about something related to that product or so it could be a social um, enterprise basically so for, for example i know one of the that's one of the ways entrepreneurship plays a very very good part in keeping people engaged at work you know engaging what they're passionate about engaging their skills so, so for some people it will be entrepreneurship will be centered around their abilities do you remember for some people it will be it will be related to um what they are passionate about for some people it will be something they are ambitious about um amongst other things that we have um there so that's one of the ways entrepreneurship is one of the ways we can ensure employees are engaged definitely other ways are definitely creating the right environment um, allowing them to try providing some level of autonomy where people can make decisions about their own work as well and amongst many other but employee engagement is a big topic on its own but aligning this with entrepreneurship it is it plays a very very big part in um because it also creates an excitement you know imagine your idea that you had last year you know you, you are seeing it on the front page of the newspaper or you know you are seeing it on um forbes as you know one of the biggest innovation coming out of your industry you get there's a level of satisfaction there is a way you carry yourself you know amongst other things so entrepreneurship has a huge part it can play when it comes to employee engagement how do we know when people um are disengaged the first thing is willingness to do you get that extra mile that people who usually go that's the first um first pointer to disengagement when people no longer offer themselves no longer offer that extra effort to what they do that's like the first step to knowing when people are disengaged Productivity might not be affected because some people are good at what they do. They can you know they can sleep and do what they do? So productivity might not be affected. But you realize that over time, um, you would be getting a stagnant output. There won't be an increase. There won't be a you know improvement from such person. But the first time you would see averagely is the willingness to do things. Thank you very much, Sambo. I think that answered the question um how do you know when someone is engaged and disengaged uh someone actually will be having the rec record recording after this um webinar of course yes so um we make sure to upload um a replay or a rewatch of this on our youtube page so once um, we have the recording um downloaded and all then the link will also be sent to everyone by email to watch it on our youtube then we have this question from um jennifer obi um, she says, thank you, Samuel, and um, she is uh, true by what you have just dished out to us this afternoon. Our question is this, you identified how ideas can change the trajectory of a business, and sometimes companies aren't designed to enable this. From the employee's view, how do employees with great ideas manage a system like this? I love this question because I read something very, very, something related to this response exactly. And I'll type, um, I'll type something in the chat right now. Um, I would want everyone to read it. I'll try to open my tab while I am typing it as a read tab because I don't know if it's on top of my head. Okay, okay. Intrapreneurs. So I've typed something in the chat box. You guys should not mind my profile picture. Pinchot 
10 commandments for intrapreneurs. In short, you know, just read it up and Google it. And it, it, it answers navigating that workplace. And I would, I'll just read a few of it, you know, from my tab here. And, you know, the first rule says, walk on the ground as long as you can. Publicity triggers corporate immune system. The moment they see that you have an idea that could imbalance things, they would kill it as soon as possible. So some first commandments, walk on the ground as long as you can. The second thing is, remember, it is easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. Brood on that one very well. It is easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. You know, that idea you have, keep testing it. Don't, don't scale it up, don't announce it, but keep testing it. It is easier to ask for, sorry, I mean, my, my, it's still locking me out. Okay, yeah. It is easier to ask for forgiveness. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry that happened. I was just trying to do this, than it is to say, imagine what it will take you to go to your boss to say, because I was thinking we should do this. But you know, you've already done it. Yeah, you've already done it. You know, like, I was so sorry that that happened. You know, you used to don't do something that would kill your business anyways. But you know, it is easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. The third year says, I won't do everything so you guys can go and read it. I'll just pick out some that um, I think you should um, work on. Do any job needed to make your project work, regardless of your job description. So don't focus on your job description. Do I know I, I, there are ideas? I, I remember when I was working in the bank, there were ideas that I had that I did not tell my boss, I did not tell anybody. I just did it on my work, on my job there. I remember so when, when I started going for career fairs, I will apply for career fairs. I will not tell my boss, I'll just say, Boss, is this career fair coming up? I want us to participate. I was outrightly asking for permission at that point, but I'd already gone ahead. You know, imagine I had gone to say, Oh, we want to attend the career fair. Um, do you think we should go? You know, some, some other questions will come up. Or, you know, and when I was going also to inform of us to start attending career fairs then, it was, um, I'd add some other answers to say, oh, you know, this is what it can do for us, you know, improve our quantity of applications, you know, improve our employer branding, in regards to a lot, a lot more people would see us, amongst more other things then. So do any job you need to do to make your project work, basically, regardless of the job description as an employee. The, the um, next thing I would want to mention here is follow your intuition about people you choose and work only with the best. You get, don't just choose people because oh, they are your organizational friends, they are your colleagues. Choose people that can see what you are seeing and can work on it with you. You get the people that know it and can do it very well as much as you can. People that can see, it is not, a lot of times ideas do not die because they are not great ideas. They die because other people or the people that it was sold to do not see the value in those ideas. You get so ideas do not just die. You know, it's sometimes the people element is the people agency is always always there. So focus out as well on you know the type of people, the quality of people that you also can introduce these ideas to. And then the last one I just mentioned there is be true to your goals. You know, be true to you know these ideas you have, but be realistic about it as well. Don't just bring an idea that looks like oh. You know, we are still struggling to get to Mars. I think that's what was it, guys? The Elon Musk is still trying to do. And your idea is to get to Pluto. You get. Let's even take it one step at a time. Let's get to Mars. Let's explore Mars a bit more. Let's look at the next planet before we get to Pluto. You know, be realistic about your ideas as well you know, as you are proceeding to work. Well, you know, just read up the pictures. You know, ten commandments for entrepreneurs, and I'm sure it will give you more insight if you are navigating that. But remember, it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. That one should stick. Thank you very much, Samuel. That was very insightful. Um, while you were um, giving a response to that question, I remember a time when um, this is entrepreneur, because before then, years back, I used to have this notion that, well, an entrepreneur is, you know, we, we kind of just abuse the word. We say an entrepreneur is one that has a business, <clears throat> more or less, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm selling this, I'm selling that, or I have you know, people working under me, I'm paying salaries and all. But he said something that day. He said he cannot own a business, but whatever the business is selling, he can sell it very well. So he's more or less like a ring maker, as you explained earlier. And um, we can have entrepreneurs in an 
organization, even when yes, we have you know, as the head. So your um, um, today's webinar has really, really explained that part that uh, um, organizations are looking for uh, entrepreneurial um, um, employees. And again, employees themselves want to show that entrepreneurial skill. And so it's a two-way street. Both parties should uh, manage each other, make sure they come together, which is collaboration. Um, yeah. the, the last question, which um, Jennifer asked, really um, shared more, maybe shed more light on that, how you can still thrive in a place where probably uh, uh, ideas are not openly tolerated, how you can go about it. Thank you very much. Um, Sam, I think you have a, a training coming up. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I'll, 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 I'll mention that once. Just give you permission, I'll, I'll mention that as well. Okay, okay. So um, do we have more questions? We can still take one. We can still take one question. So who will be the who will be who will be asking the last question for today? You can just take one question before we wrap up. Or maybe uh and Sam, you can go ahead and talk about okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. So um I have a training coming up. Um, is a tech is a tech recruitment training. I understand that a lot of people here might not be tech um, recruiters or HR professionals, but um, if you're an HR professional in this session today, I you know I am organizing a training early early August, early August, yeah, early August um, for tech recruiters. So if you're looking to uh, getting into tech recruitment, sharpen your tech, you know. Your understanding of you know technological framework, domains, languages is something that you look out for. But the reason I'm announcing this in this class is not to market it to you, it's to tell you that BZ is um is um has offered you know to sponsor two people from this class. They've offered to sponsor two people from this class. Um, so I would say you know if you want to participate, if you want if you want to stand the chance of you know taking this up, sincerely you must be an HR professional, or at least started a career in HR already. Um. I wouldn't say state the criteria how outright, but I prefer you put down, you know, young professionals, you know, in HR, um, you know, to join that session. I'm not too people not people that are not too experienced. Just shoot me an email with TSA at asamakilota.com. Shoot me an email with preferably your CV and you know just a cover a cover note showing you know why you why you are interested in getting um that scholarship. They are sponsoring two people, but you know if um I, I'm I'm sure God can touch my eyes and I can offer someone else if the story is compelling. Um, enough as well. So the, the training, the cost of the training is fifty thousand naira. But you would offer to sponsor two people. So if you want to tap into that, you don't think. Um, and I'm having, I'll be having myself. I'll be facilitating. I'll be having, you know, a senior software engineer from you know one of the top fintech um, organizations in Nigeria joining that session, and another, um, you know, top tech recruiter, um, as well joining that session. So it's going to be for two Saturdays in August. So if you're looking to uh, tap into that opportunity. Shoot me an email, you know, attach your CV, do a cover note, just share why you think you deserve it, you deserve a scholarship. But two persons, and as I said, God might touch my heart and I'll just offer some um, more people as well. Um, so thank you very much, Ambiola. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Sam. You can just do what to type your email in the chat box. So um oh it's on it's on the screen. I it's on it's on okay. Oh yes, 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 it's there. So yes, 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 okay, yes, 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 Okay, thank you very much, Samuel, uh, for today's session. This is how we come to an end of um, the Edge Life for the month of June. Um, it has been wonderful this afternoon listening to Samuel, and uh, we've learned a lot. So I believe we are going home, we're going back to our businesses, irrespective of if you are the CEO, the MD there, or you just the line manager, or probably the, the people leader uh, at your workplace. You're going back to make sure that entrepreneurship uh, doesn't die. Remember, just one idea from someone can be the innovation your business needs. So BZ organizes this every month and um, we welcome you to join next month's um, edition. Of course, you can follow BZ with social on the Instagram, Twitter, and also on LinkedIn at uh, the BZ app. And I do well to also check out the one and all um, all-in-one management tool. Uh, our website www.bizedgeapp.com and um, it's free so you can sign up and start using it for free um, 
you get to manage your workforce better. You get to uh, have easy onboarding. Um, you also get to use the self-service uh, tool, which is my edge. So just the way you have um, the Visage app, you also have the My Edge app. So you get to request for leave uh, without writing that very long email to your to your um, line manager requesting why you have to go. So just with the click of a button, you can request for your leave. So it's really self-service made for uh, employees of uh, organization. So do well to check out the app, download it, use it. It's free and uh, give us feedback on how uh, you enjoy using the app. So this is how we come to an end of today's session. Thank you very much, Samuel. So we'll come your way next month. Yeah. Just continue to put our best foot foot forward in whatever we do. We just continue to get better and better every day. Have a wonderful afternoon. And you too. Thank you so much for having me. Bye.